greatest man who don't get racing all the time, Tony F. Um, I don't know. I don't think I see it more as a as a, a character. It's something I never expected to happen, so I think that's possibly why I feel it more as a a character or a nickname rather than a, actually the true meaning of being the goat. I think that the drives really come from my dad. You know, he um, he was quite competitive and is quite competitive and is also a racer himself. He raced motocross for years and uh, I think I've kind of followed in his footsteps. I think there's, there's lots of talk of me just being on a pro team my whole career, which wasn't the case. In 98, when I managed to go and do a few races, it wasn't that easy. Uh, didn't qualify for any World Cups. It, it was a struggle. I, I was really homesick, I battled to be in Europe. I think that was probably the one point in my career where I felt that I didn't feel I could actually make it. And that was quite tough because I just made a big sacrifice to leave school and to uh, try and pursue this dream of racing. And I think people telling me I wouldn't be able to make it or um, that I was living in a dream world, that racing mountain bikes professionally was just was just a dream and it will never be a reality was possibly some of the things that have pushed me the hardest to, to make sure I made it and succeeded. I think the racing's changed a lot over the years and that's something that I've had to adjust to because you know, I remember the guys would like pedal hard in the beginning of the, the, the pedal section and then sit up, rest, and, and then attack the next section. And now we attack from the start to the finish. There's no breaking up the track in terms of how you, you ride it. You, you've got to ride it 100% the whole way down. I think if I've fully mastered downhill and feel like I'm on top of the world and on top of the sport, I'd probably then uh, call it quits. But each year I finish, I feel like there's something more or I haven't quite excelled in one area and I always find a weakness. That competitiveness or that the way that I'm able to break down honestly how I feel and how my equipment is, I think that's uh, a clear indication that I'm still hungry to race. To me, the sport is so tough. It's mentally taxing, it's physically taxing. I'm having lockdown in South Africa and absolutely having to rest for two weeks. We weren't allowed to leave our houses and I decided to take a break. So my body just recovered and, and, and relaxed for once in the 39 years I've been alive, so. Is that any better? Alan, yes, I can hear you perfectly. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I think it's pretty better you don't. Uh, I haven't had time to do my hair like you've had time to do your hair, mate. <laughs> Been working with Stefan Gerard since 2003. What I needed to add a little bit more to my training program, Laura had arranged this, this test camp with Ella Millway at the end of 2019. Alan was working a lot on movement as well as trying to build a strength base, but I think our, our main goal was moving well. To, be as relaxed and as fluid as I can on the bike and not be, um, and not try and muscle my way down. I think that's, that's been a goal of 2020. Because we've got about nine to 10 weeks, haven't we? About nine weeks, I think, after, yeah. after this week. So we've still got time. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we do, yeah. I know. We've just got to pace it. I think pacing is going to be really important. So. You still, you're still fresh enough and still increasing as opposed to just trying to maintain. It's, you know, through sport, uh, I love sport, so being competitive in sport is, is possibly the, the aim of the game. 
but sometimes carrying that competitiveness over into to other aspects of life is probably a little, um, little tough. You've got to learn to balance that because I don't think it's, it's healthy. It, it's a tough gamble at times because it's, it's so deep within you, but I think when you're competing in a higher level, you definitely push that competitiveness to, to another degree where um, there's a social side of competitiveness too. So this is my, uh, the house where I grew up at. Um, haven't been here in probably 10, 15 years, 10 years. My family sacrificed a lot. This house was rebonded so that I could go and race in Europe. And uh, this whole area here was full of like Coca-Cola fridges that my dad used to refurbish after work and like in weekends and spare time. We used to try and help out. I don't think he appreciated our help much. Right next to the electrical box and I had this like maybe six, seven inch ruts that you could just carve in and then pull out. It was like a, uh, I used to dream of, of being on a supercross track. We had like a, this was like the high speed section, going around to another turn before we had to pedal back up, which I used to think this driveway was a lot steeper than it was. <clears throat> Should I show you guys the street track? Got a bike, yeah? Might as well. So the main, the main corner, which I even dug little braking bumps in, was this right hand around this tree. And it used to be really narrow and skinny little bugger. And eventually my mum had to stick a stake in it because I'd clipped it so many times it was falling out. You ready for the first sender? I will send some of the biggest gaps at the World Cups. I, I, I don't mind jumping. I've always loved jumping. I think being a shitty jump builder growing up has possibly trained me to, to be able to read the, the lip or the jump or, or whatever. So there's some gaps that, you know, I would have thought these younger guys would have done, but they seem a little bit more reserved than, than um, the area that I grew up racing in, so. Land and then do the Simba's leap. But it's a flipping long gap. Seemed like we could get a lot higher on our BMXs rather than these big wheels. But you had a bit of option here. You could either miss the technical tire tap and go straight for the big sender, which only two of us did. Or you could do the tire tap and then do a little tabletop. And then that was it. I think we need to do the big sender. Pretty sweet. <laughs> I've never just had this run of wins. And I think that's what I love about the sport is it's so easy to drop back off. That same part of the challenge that I, I never feel like I'm quite there. I'll have, you know, I might win a World Cup and then the next week maybe be second or third or whatever the case, and then I want to win again. So I've got to like build up and work on, on all the pieces again to get there. I don't know, I didn't like the mullet. Um, I wasn't liking it. And then I felt really good on it. And now I just had a pretty good run on this. So we'll see. Laris uh, ride only in mullet uh, this year. Laris will ride anything Lurk rides. If Lurk rode a pony down the hill, Laris would want a pony. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what a sports psychologist does. I know what I do, and I'm nervous that my uh, process and the way I break things down will be interrupted if someone else alters or adjusts. It has uh, come up to me through Roscop telling me that uh, my performance at the very first opening race of the season, and so uh, I said to Rob, give me another race to kind of work things out, and uh, if that doesn't happen, uh, then I'll, I'll go see someone. So I ended up winning the next race and uh, he hasn't hassled me since. So I don't know what I do. I think just the way I, I break it down simply is, is, is possibly what makes my mental game so strong. I 
It might seem like it's all calm and quiet and on race day. It doesn't feel like that to me. I feel quite stressed. By finals day, my bike's ready. I've made maybe possibly one or two minor changes going into the final, but I'll be fully confident in that move. It, it wouldn't just be a, a full-on guess. Got my headphones on and, and eyes closed before a race. It's, it's a massive storm inside. Then I just focus on, on what I need to do. So from everything, breaking into the corner, each rock and route, the line I want to be on. The, the goal is to push beyond 100% in, in each final, but then trying to eliminate that risk out of it. Yeah, sometimes you, you'll get in a bit of a panic, or I will get in a bit of a panic down to the bottom if I haven't um, found a place where I've possibly caught up the time that I feel I've lost. And then I'll just start to try and do things a, a bit crazier. I definitely had that thought in the back of my mind if I can actually win a game. So that gave me some confidence into the second race. You know, it was Lurk and I, red and green, the whole way down. If you get beat by a second or by two seconds, you know, you know the guy's better than you. And when it's down to 0.17, that's uh, too close. So that definitely set the tone for my off season. I was so fired up. I want to race to win, I want to race to be on the podium. That's when I know it's not really time yet. I feel I'm still too competitive, I feel like there's unfinished business and uh, it needs to be taken care of.